unfortunately, we believe in promises that were not made to us. And sometimes we read in the Bible in certain places and we're like, God promised to this person that will happen to them. Therefore, it will, it will also me. happen to me. We can't hijack other people's promises. Hey guys, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm here with Emil. How are you doing, Emil? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well, actually. It's a bit raining, yeah. but it's actually very nice weather. It's very cold. <laughs> uh, it is, it is. We've had yeah. a few hot days. Yeah. Um, today, I don't want to take too time off the viewers. Mm -hmm. Today, we're actually talking about God's promises. Wow, good topic. So, as we do with every single topic, we actually try and define what the name of the topic is episode is yeah. Yeah. yeah so what is god's promises to you oh, okay um well what i see is god's promise is um what god god's will is um in my life and where he wants me to be and the promise is often often a blessing that comes from going according to god's will so for example if god's promise is for me to um <clears throat> be of use in the church so to be in, in a position in the church where i'm helping people if that's god's promise for me then if i'm in the church and you know putting a lot of work in it obviously that promise will come to pass so it's 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 about pretty much god say, telling you this is where you're going to end up and you going along his will with his will ending up there so that's how i see it of course there's different scenarios in different cases but it's it's god's it's god's word and god's will in your life in our life being oh, manifested nice nice yeah okay cool what do you think it is um to me to be honest with you if if you look at the new testament i tie god's promises to christ and i think in christ we receive god's promises what what he's always meant for us so for example the salvation of our souls that promise can only be fulfilled in jesus amen and i can only receive that promise in jesus amen. and other things for example provision amen. right jesus speaks about how god is always faithful to provide for us and for me to receive that promise i need to actually believe in the words of jesus because mm -hmm. Jesus himself said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink, right? And even don't worry about tomorrow. Even our future, I put that in God's hand because yeah. I believe in his promises. So do you think that a promise from God is is a mixture of our faithfulness in him and his faithfulness? Because how faithful he is as a as a being? Yeah, so, I mean, if you look at the New Testament, it says mm -hmm. even if we're faithless, God is still faithful. Mm -hmm. So I do believe in God's promises being accomplished yes. by all means because, yes. I mean... They're you, greater than us. Yeah, yeah, like you've got an example in the Old Testament because I don't want to just use the New Testament. Um, you've got Abraham. Mm -hmm. God's promise was that he will multiply his descendants. Yes. Now, Abraham was a very old man, and you would think that, you know, naturally, you're not going to be able to produce children, especially when your wife is 90 and you're 100, yeah. right? A bit younger than that. But... It would be safe to assume that his um, descendants would come from somebody, possibly a yeah. younger woman. Which is why he went for Hagar. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm saying even at times where it is beyond our control, God still fulfills his promise. Yeah. Miraculously. Um, some, well, most of the time it's miraculous in the Bible. Yeah. Miraculously. Um, and, and God has given his son to the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's given sal salvation to all of the world. Yeah. But now that promise can only be fulfilled if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your yeah. life. So Jesus dying on the cross for you uh, would not mean anything, would have of no value unless you receive that. Yeah. If you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, then everything that God has a promise that is in Christ, 
no longer applies to you mm -hmm. because you still live in your sin. You still continue in your own ways. So that's why I'm, I'm like in the beginning, I was like, I believe that the promises that we have as Christians are all packed in Christ. Amen. And without Christ, we can not receive any of that. Yeah. Now, I think we can talk about this and I want to get your opinion on it is sometimes people feel like when, when people are chasing God's promises, right? Mm -hmm. Let's use the word chasing. Sure. When people are chasing God's promises, sometimes they might not feel comfortable. They might feel like, am I being greedy here? Mm -hmm. Or am I going above <clears throat> what maybe I should be asking for? Can you give an yeah. example of what you mean like by chasing a promise? Uh, like, for example, you, you've got promises in the sense where um, God is providing for you. We spoke about provision. Sure. Or, for example, that um, God will take care of you and your family. Is it similar to saying, like, God promised me a job that will help provide not only for my family, but for my brothers and sisters that are struggling overseas? Like, yeah, and, and then because I'm struggling right now, I'm like, wait, maybe I'm supposed to do something, but now I should rely on God. I shouldn't look for jobs. I'll just leave it in God's hands. Like that type of thing. It's more like, it, it feels like you're in a state of a beggar, right? Mm. In the sense that I should just go find a job. You know, God should not be included. Oh, I wouldn't say God should not be included. I in it, but you know, like, oh. If I approach God, I feel like I'm asking for too much. Yeah. But to me, as a Christian, I'm like, no, you just have to go to God. You come to God and, and seek these things. Because if He's if God is called to provide for me, I can also seek God for a job. I can also seek God for provision. I think it's a lot different when it's some random person asking you for something where it's your son. So, like, for example, you have children of your own. If your children came to you and said, Dad, I'm worried about what I'm supposed to do for work. I know, like, I know what I'm supposed to do. But do you have any advice? Can you help me maybe lead me in the right direction? Give me your expertise because you know a lot more than me. Is, that, is there anything wrong with that? No, I don't see it. Would you be upset? Wrong. No, I wouldn't. How about if he comes to you for, like, everything to get your advice? Would you be angry at that? No, I wouldn't. If it's anything, like, because he's relying on you because you know more, that's a compliment to you. And yeah. you'd be honored. Like, you'd be like, wow, I feel I feel like he really cares about me and values my opinion. Yeah, It, it shows how much he cares about you and loves you and, and respects you as a father. So why would you be embarrassed or try to, or, or feel like, oh, um, maybe, I, maybe, maybe God will think I'm using him like a lottery ticket type thing. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, yeah, we have to see him like a loving father because that's who he is. And yeah. That's how Jesus describes him. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Like we, we shouldn't be discouraged whether there are like a feeling inside where mm -hmm. we feel like maybe we're pushing yeah. our, our um, what would the word be? Like pushing our luck with God. Yeah. Um, or other people might say, look, don't, don't bother okay. this. Just be practical about it. Be more practical about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very encouraging. And, and as you were talking, it just reminded me of what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. He said, um, you know, seek and you shall find and, and all these things that we have in Christ. So Christ is actually encouraging us to pursue through him. Yeah. There's, you know? there's a lot of promises with that comes with following Christ as our Lord and savior. There's a lot of promises. Um, there's a lot of um, good things that come with it. There's a lot of bad things that are expected um, because of the way we live. So the world, it, it's a promise that the world will hate us because they hated, they hated our master. And it's a promise that God will love us, right? Just as he loved, you know, just as he loved his son for following, you know, his will. Just as the same way that the father will love us for following Christ's path and carrying our cross. Um, so, I always try to do what Paul says, which is be like him because he's trying to be like Christ. And if we do that, I, I see that God's promise in our life and everything that Jesus said, you know, you see that in your life, manifesting in your life and just happening. Um, 
so I, I think just following God's will is definitely important and it being obedient is key in that. Because if, if we, for example, say that God promised me this and we just sit down and do nothing and just ignore God completely, just get along with our life. And we're like, God, why isn't God's promise happening? Well, maybe that's not where God wants us to be. Sometimes God wants us in a certain place before that promise can be um, established in our life, right? So in order for us to get to that point where the promise can happen, we need to go through the desert to get to the promised land type thing. And um, speaking of that analogy, you can see that, you know, for them, for that promise, I think we spoke about this before, for the promise for Israel to be taken out of Egypt, to become, for Lord, the Lord to become their Lord, for God to become their Lord, and for the, the promised land to be given to them, it wasn't just, you know, as simple as, I'll give it to you, finish, done. There were certain criteria that needed to be met before that happened. And because of their disbelief, because of their um, evil, it was delayed and delayed and delayed. And, and only, you said only two people, yeah. right, managed to get to the promised land. And it yeah, wasn't in because, that generation. And it yeah. wasn't because God was unfaithful. It's because they were unfaithful. Yeah. And because they were not where God wanted them to be. So the like p part of that promise for them, and most of the time even for us, is for us to be where God wants us to be, for that promise to happen. So as long as, long as we, we are obedient and we're doing what God wants, that promise will happen. There's nothing that can stop it. It's only our disobedience that hinders and stops and breaks that vow, that promise. Yeah, disobedience and as you said earlier, it's that disbelief. Disbelief. Because, I mean, man, millions of Christians would open the Bible on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But how often we, we read a passage and say, I believe that. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's something that God has said and I believe in it. This scripture, I believe in it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's so important. When God is talking to us. Yes. And when we have things, especially that are more direct to us, we should take that in belief. We should say, well, that's what God said. I'm going to take God on his word. Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe in it. Um, now, sometimes, unfortunately, we believe in promises that were not made to us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we read in the Bible in certain places and we're like, God promised to this person, that will happen to them. Therefore, it will, it will also me. happen to me. We can't hijack other people's promises. Yes. There are certain promises that God makes to certain groups of people, and sometimes to one generation, well, how and about sometimes if, to one person. Yeah, but there's also so, times where there's promises that God makes that are not permanent. So it's not, it's, it's this will happen. But that doesn't mean it's always going to be happening. Sometimes it's just for a set time. Yeah. And we have to have the wisdom to know this. And if we don't know this, to ask God if we're unsure. And that's where that that connection, that relationship must always remain um, open. Um, and our eyes and our ears seeing and listening to what God is saying to us. Through people, through the word of God, through through sometimes even God speaking to you directly. Um it, it happens. It's it's rare, but uh, yeah, it does it's, happen. Yeah, so I, I think maybe as a Christian, mm. it, we spoke about a person who's not so confident yeah. in seeking God in his promises. Yeah. And now you're dealing with people who are overconfident Overcom and they believe that everything is, about is related to them. Yeah. And I think we just need to be careful yes. when we are opening scripture and seeing what God is saying and what he is promising mm -hmm. and could we be included in that promise yeah. or maybe it is for someone else. Like, for example, when God, as we're still talking about Israel, when God promised the Israelites, which are basically the family of Abraham, a land, I, I'm not going to go there and say, God, where is my country? For my descendants like all sound crazy we adopted sons of abraham <laughs> we want our inheritance uh, it's to yeah. think about it this way we just have to be very careful because yeah. what happens there 
and I've unfortunately met people go through this where they've taken a promise in the Bible and it's, it didn't happen in their life because it wasn't for them. Mm-hmm. They turn around to God and blame God. Say, God, you said this in your in the scripture and it's not happening in my life. And you're like, you just got to put two and two together. Yeah. It's not for you. Yeah. Let God give you the promises that are meant to be for you. Yeah. And don't try and add anything more to that. And when God puts his promises in your life, don't expect it to happen like you would think it will happen. Yes. Or in your own timing. Because yeah. there are things in the Bible that even God promises, for example, to Abraham, that happened hundreds of years later. And he even gave him, he even spoke about the seed. And that happened over a thousand. So, yeah. like, you're thinking until Jesus came. And you're thinking, sometimes we just have to be patient. Let God, when he promises and when he gives his word, let's just trust in it. Yeah, we just have to yeah. be obedient, remain obedient and just rely on him. And in saying that, at the same time, if you were to promise me a job and say, Emil, if you apply for this company's position, you will 100% get this job. But I don't apply because I don't really believe that I'm going to get the job. But then after two months, I say to you, hey, Martin, how come I didn't get the job? Like, did you apply? Did you apply? And I'm like, yeah. well, no, but you promised me the job. Yeah, but you need to apply. Okay, but I thought you said I'll get the job. So why do I need it? Like it's, we still need to do our part and be at the right place at the right time. And sometimes our disbelief, Sometimes our own actions impede and make make that take longer. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And and it's interesting how God dealt like this. We we spoke about the people in the wilderness, how God dealt with them in their disobedience and in their yeah. disbelief. He was so angry at them. Yeah. And instead of them taking this three week trip to get to the land it took 40 years of wandering in the desert and when they were in their disbelief and disobedience instead of them recognizing their fault and understanding why they didn't receive the promise they complained in the desert they complained to moses they complained to god so sometimes when god's promises are not being fulfilled in our life, instead of looking at ourselves and saying, okay, what am I doing wrong? We're looking at God saying, what are you doing wrong? What are you doing wrong? Like, why aren't you not doing the right thing? And God is, as we said, he's always faithful. He'll get his part done. It's just we need to look at ourselves and say, what's preventing us Mm. from you know, that promise of God being fulfilled in our life. And, and I know a lot of people, they ask, like, I haven't done anything wrong. I've been obedient. I've done this. And I say, well, I know certain people in your life that are actively in your life that are not like that. I know certain people in your life that are cursed to you, that are literally bringing negative things in your life and they're a negative impact in your life. And you can see that that could be impeding The promises that God has made for you. Because they say, oh, God promised me this. It's not happening. Why is this? Why is it taking so long? Why is this? Well, what do you look at your life? Look at look from an outside perspective into your life and see what is going on in my life. Where where is something maybe going wrong? Because there is a spiritual battle happening. We can't see it, but it is happening. And the devil and his principalities and his dominions and whatever, whatever it is. They've got plans to impede God's promises because that's pretty much their job. Their job is to be against God, to be in re- active rebellion against him. So what, what better way to do that than to impede where God wants, what God wants us to be in our, li- in, in our life? Hmm. So to, to stop that, delay that, to sabotage, what else do they have other than that? Yeah. And sometimes in our own arrogance, we let them and blame God for it. 
Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, I, th I think it's important to <clears throat> reflect on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think it's also important to be discerning, mm -hmm. as we spoke about earlier, is in regards of what are the biblical promises for you in your life, what God has made and wants to fulfill in your life, and what are things are not part of the promises for you. Yeah. Maybe it's for someone else. Um, and we should not be discouraged when everything doesn't happen in a day or two. Yeah. Just be faithful just have faith, um, as we said, obedience and belief together is what gets you over the line. Yes. And that's very important. Amen. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and uh, we've got another episode yep. in regards to curses and blessings. Yep. So that's that's going to be an amazing one. Amen. Um, God bless you and take care. Take See care. ya. Bye-bye.